Yes, hello, welcome back to another episode of Fashion Eye. As always, it's your boy, Christian Zaramba, and this is the Fashion Eye on non KC2. So we are here at uh, Motions for the next episode. So it's going to be an amazing episode, so stay tuned. We're going to be having more and more on the show, the trend, the style, your style, and everything. So hope you stay tuned and see everything that is happening. Let's start with the trends. We'll be right back. Our first story tonight brings you the best fashion moments from the night of the annual Academy Museum 2022. The Haley Baber arrived at the Academy Museum. The model wore a drop and twisted strapless dress with a cutout waist reforced from the brand Springs 2023 Ready to Wear collection. On to the next best dress of the night was Selena Gomez. On Saturday, Selena Gomez in her take on a woman tuxedo. On to the next fashion phenomenon in her own right, the 21 years old Kay Geba wore the sleek black earlier outfit consisting of the dropped skirt and sheer turtleneck first debuted on the runway. Last but not least is one and only Sophia Tana and Joe Jonas opted for the age look for the night out. The Game of Thrones actress struck her staff in a two-tone brown blazer that fell to about mid tie which she starred with a black leather miniskirt. To Joe Jonas, 33 years old, went with a unique black leather assembled consisting with a clothed blazer, star jacket and matching pants. That's it from the trends part. Hope you enjoyed and saw what's trending in the fashion industry. The news, the fashion shows, the red carpets. Hope you enjoyed and let's move on to the interview part. As always, we sit down with different people, fashion designers, models, you know, everyone like in the fashion industry. So let's take a look at them and we'll be right back. Yes, we are back again with another interview and uh, this time interview, there's no need of an introduction, is one of the iconic and uh, legends, I mean the fashion industry. I've been like wanting to interview him for quite some time now. Finally, we are here at Motions. Welcome Moses. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, because literally you have done so many interviews at this point that you, you don't really need to introduce yourself. No, come on. I need to introduce myself. My name is Moses Turahirwa. I'm the creative director of Motions. No, you don't. Need I that. do. <laughs> I mean, why? Come on. It's, um, it's crude, but also it's not that we make it a common culture. People need to introduce. It's not really everyone that knows me, I think. Because uh, thank you very much for having us here at your store. Uh, your fashion brand motions we would love to know more i think peop you have told the story many times but as for the viewers who just saw you now mm -hmm. how did everything start for you like i mean the brand the artistic side of, fa of fashion have you ever because most of the designers start as models as you did but i want to know like the designing part of it how did everything start for you so as you said you started from getting an interest you developing my interest in fashion, but not necessarily in fashion design, mm. but in uh, knowing what is out there about beauty, aesthetics, and everything. So, and then I stepped on real designing in 2015 when I started knowing or developing my also other um, insight or love towards the making. So tailoring, seamstressing, and stuff. Started to know to make my own garments in 2015. That's how it started and started slowly by making my garments through tailors uh, in, in the city, around the city, and then started to develop more interest into, because there was a, like, a, a reception or a response to that from my friends, my family, and I was like, oh, actually, this I feel good doing this, and I feel like I want to keep doing it. So you, uh, you had an interview, like live interview on Instagram with Ali Sudi, and you kind of talked about being uh, not satisfied when you were like doing the modeling days. You wanted more. Mm -hmm. And then that's how the fashion industry started for you. From the time you are at now, are you feeling satisfied? Are you satisfied with all this we are saying here? <laughs> I think I was 
say yes, I am satisfied. And um, the fact that I, I say I wasn't satisfied, I didn't know if I said I wasn't satisfied, no, but right yeah, but I say that I could, there were so many things that like I could see me not doing fully because they were like also um, complaints or discouragement about modeling, about myself, something that was speaking a lot to myself, to my feelings. Oh, I was not that tall kind of model in that in those days of like I could do the best. And in everything I want to do, I want to be just the best, the best in it. So I realized that I couldn't be the best in that area in, by then and started to venture into something, something related to that but something different. And develop then felt the anger or the, the courage to develop more skills in the in this more than the modeling. I could also be the best in modeling, but I felt more secure, more good to design for me than to to model. People take you as a trendsetter for me, as I see you, because you are the one among the first designers that tried out using our culture and uh, mix it with the luxurious and. Uh, making outfits, what do you think about as a trendsetter of studying Imigongo and now the whole Rwandan world, like the Rwanda is like using the same trend. What do you think about that? Are you proud of that, that journey or maybe you think they took something from you? I think it's a pride. Mm -hmm. It's really a pride and it's a privilege. It's, a, it's, it's an honor. It's an honor for me. It's a, it's something that I don't know, I don't actually describe it the way the audience describe it or the rest of the people describe it because I celebrate it. I think if this is my win, this is my people's win. This is something we were looking forward to. This is something Rwandans were like looking forward to in terms of identifying or finding the identity in themselves. The clothes that you can relate to, the clothes that you feel like they are really randoms. Either me making them or other people, but you know, you know other people, saying. exactly. So for me, I'm speaking from this uh, angle of privilege and the pride of starting that, as you say, to, uh, after starting that trend. Mm -hmm. What it gives to me is not, is, is massive joy. Is that I, I like to say, I don't care about even people making it a business or don't, there is nothing. It's, been there as the culture, me bringing one other form of interpreting it is an addition that needs to be celebrated in one way or another. So I see that as, as, as a celebration, as, a, as another flag for the country. So, and then I feel good, I feel the pride every time I come across even many shops in the city having imigong or wearing it, I'm like, wow, like, you know, <laughs> like I feel good, honestly. You, your latest collection, Imangwa, you launched it uh, in Italy, and then uh, I want uh, to tell us a little bit about that collection. What was it about? You talked about it on Instagram, gender, freedom, and uh, celebrating our culture, but also removing the stereotype, you know, like gender fluid, things like that. I want to know more. What, was, what were you telling about the story, the story you're telling about the collection? Uh, it's really great, interesting that also you, you, you followed. What I was telling now is that the story has been evolving, the culture, uh, the, the findings has been evolving in terms of the culture, the celebration, but also the way it evolves, it takes me to do a dig, to dig deep uh, in a research and do what I can do even beyond, beyond what is normally known beyond what people approach or associate with i want i want to go inside and then when that's when i started going inside the culture or going inside the fashion and realize that you know the we worry sometimes about stereotypes or the way of dressing that is not actually ours and then i get to discover the drip I get to discover how we men and women were wearing the same style uh, back in days. So it went from um, uh, the collection was celebrating a deep research or a deep dive into the Rwandan still, into my own existence as a Rwandan, knowing my roots, knowing my roots, but making the roots for the next. 
basically. It's like you get an inspiration, but you make it yours. So I saw the machine and all different ways of typing the stereotype that hasn't been there. The fluidity of men in terms of decorating themselves, the hairstyle, the extravagant kind of style that was in the 50s. Uh, for me, I felt like actually we fucked up. We lost the elegance, yeah. you know. And then I was like, I want that same, pro that kind of vibe of elegance because I resonate with it. But in 2023, which means I'm not probably going to work wearing the wrap, uh, but I can see what the, white, uh, the, the colonial era brought and infuse that kind of same shape of something that I resonate with. So that was what I celebrated with the manga because it also took so much time to develop. Um, that collection and went deep also in the colors and the fibers, the fabrics, uh, deep research in international manipulation and, and, and the making. So it was, it was a very fulfilling um, kind of moment, but also intensive and very challenging. Do you think Rwandans will ever underst will understand? Because oh, you're a trendsetter, as I said it before, st starting the trend, uh, don't you get pressure? of yes. being, okay, this collection, I think, will Rwandans accept that? Will I see a person wearing this outfit on the street? Do you think Rwandans will get to? When I said the deep dive is also that I did in, in the design aspect mainly, it reflects Rwandan, but I did what Rwandan also acquired from abroad, including these uh, dresses we wear, the suits and everything. So in my thinking, in my research, in my dive, I was not only thinking about Rwandans. I was thinking about Rwandans and who brought this to Rwanda or the rest of the world as well, in terms of it's now modern, modern is, in, is, is the universe. So, but it was like the design is an influence of my culture from Rwanda. So, uh, but to speak about Rwandans, what they think, I think that they, they, I've been also taking the same kind of risk because if I say I haven't seen a bid work of these people, the dancers or the, uh, the shield in, in a bag or in a, in, on a cloth. So it's, it's been, the pressure is there, it comes there to be like, okay, but what am I trying to do now, the skills and the development and everything, but it's like, how is the audience going to reflect or, um, you know, react to that? It's a, it's a great discovery, but because I have all been doing that, I feel less pressure. I'll be like, yes, it will come through or it can, but the most important thing is that I do it to feel good, to satisfy first myself, to feel like I'll do something that I had in mind and bring it to life, then the rest of the audience get to resonate with it. Every time you launch a brand, I've noticed this on Twitter, every time you launch a brand and every time you, I think, I don't know if someone who screenshots your online motions and uh, people can't get to it. I'm like, oh my God, how is this expensive? Like, do really Rwandans, can they afford this kind of stuff? But also for me, I understand that because this is a luxurious brand. It's not supposed to like to be for everyone. But what do you think? Like, how do we react to those kind like saga like on Twitter? People telling, oh, this motion, this is. What do you think about that? I think it's it's also good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's same kind of reactions as we're saying. The reactions be either on the product, be on the price, be on the place, mm -hmm. be on the creator, be on everything that relates to that. So it's the same kind of bullets that I took from your instinct. And when you look at the fashion, mm -hmm. the construction, or when you look at it when it's already being distributed to you, and our channels of distributing and our merchandising may speak the different language of the user yeah. because, as you say, this is something new here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's resetting something that hasn't been there. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been someone to... You don't know what it takes to bring that culture to a clothing. Mm -hmm. You don't know the steps. You don't know the research, the fibers, the acquisition of the material, who made these materials and the how, and in what time, and this, this, this. You don't know. So for me, it's what, it's all those process I take and then do my own merchandising according, but also putting the knowledge into it. Because I, I studied, I know, I know how to make a product and make a merchandising for it. I would say actually in the 
universe of fashion, in the world of fashion, it's less expensive going or requiring or with the tangible facts of like how a garment is made. Also according to how we want to grow the brand and where the brand is aiming to be and the people who can actually uh, buy those rooted, rooted emotions, you know? Yeah. Do you think, do you ever think uh, the luxurious brands, because we have seen these brands outside like the Versace's, even some Italians can't even afford that. Absolutely. Yeah. Or, or maybe Dolce Gabbana, not, yeah, not, not everyone. Yes, yes. So, but also this is where we're taking back fashion to um, being accessible to everyone, even if it's, you know, luxurious. Mm -hmm. But the dig is to understand what is first of all a garment and why do you want to buy it? If you understand also the sustainability of it, of like maybe I would rather own one garment instead of 10 garments. If you understand how fashion is polluting the world and that people are taking a step back to buying many clothes than it used to be. So you'll be like, I would rather take so much time to make one cloth than taking one day to make 100 garments because that's what mass production do and divide the price because they want to dump in your, gar in, your, in your wardrobes tons of clothing. This is not my mission. My mission is to make more time into the garment for that one person who will understand that they need probably one garment or they have the money so for even three garments or I can save up to buying one garment in a year instead of wearing many. Your outfits, one of your outfits, like you dressed many people at this time. You can't even name names, but the latest one was South Soul. They were performing, but you also dress influential people in the country. I want to know this Iman got the latest one. Like, why should, why should people wear it? Because we see them in concerts, we see them influential people, like the presidential people wearing them. Like, why should this Iman got be worn? I think everywhere as mm. your heart can be. Look, like, you, for you, when you're designing it, I want to know that they, your vision. I want, yeah, I would say that I would really design occasional outfits. Mm. Like, you need to have an occasion. You don't just randomly step out of your house, you go to the market and you wear motions. Mm -hmm. No, it's not an everyday kind of wear. Nungenda Kurimbana, that's how you call it in Kinyarwanda. Mm -hmm. Like you have an option, uh, an, act uh, an event, you have something, you have something you've prepared for because it's worth that time we put also in that clothing. Mm -hmm. If we cannot make it in just one day, don't just take it random. Take also time to prepare when you will wear this garment. And most of our clients come because they want either a souvenir to have emotions in their, in their homes, those who come from all over the world or who buy online, because it's something new, it's something special. And then you who come here, you will feel like this is not the shop you can wear every week to buy a, a 5K t-shirt. Mm -hmm. You will know like, oh, this Christmas is coming. My cousin is getting married. Oh, I have a concert to attend. I need to travel. I do the. I need those kind of exciting moments. This is why I really designed for because all these details that I taken into, it's, I would be sad if I see someone changing, you know, like motions like in the market or whatever, you know, not on a Sunday clean in a church, kind of vibes. You see. You are the first ever. A random designer to be ever featured in Vogue. Mm. What was? Tell me when you got the, the call that you're going to be in Vogue Italy. Like, mm. tell me what was it? How did you feel? Because I think at this point I've seen so much in fashion, so much involvement, but Vogue Italy that was so much. Congratulations yeah. for that. <laughs> tell me how was Thank it you. when I you got the call? <laughs> It was really great. Uh, as you say, I think I, my, I was really excited. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came, uh, we had one journalist, Chido, who came all over from Italy to create uh, content with us, especially when we launched the Couture in Mango mm -hmm. Because as I say, this is also the collection that I have been uh, developing, uh, not only in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Just to give you the, the idea that I did a master in Italy mm -hmm. to develop the, 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 the collection. So it was kind the relating and the shape, the, the fashion of it, it's actually a fusion of the Italian and Rwanda. There's so much sartorial uh, techniques involved in that, where you see the tailor and drip. The drip is more Rwandan in the construction, the tailoring is more Italian. So the fusion that 
triggered also the journalists from um, uh, all over. They, of course, the main Vogue Italia is, is the best, is the biggest deal. And I was like, you know, I, I, I felt it, it, it felt rewarding and exciting at the same time. I was like, I really invested in this, I worked for it. I, I, I deserve it in a way. But then I was also like, I am super excited. You know, I was really, really excited to be in Vogue and be in this. It's, it's, it's a great feeling, but a feeling that you really feel like you deserve sometimes. You, you, let's talk about your latest. I, I, I don't know if I could call it a collection or the, car, the, car, the cardigan. 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 So, but you brought it back. I think it was yes. one of your first like, signatures. Yes. Then you brought it back. Yes. Why was that important to bring back something and then innovate it? I would say that the cardigan is a very important piece for us. It is a piece that has been evolving since 2015. And in every collection, we actually have a cardigan. So it's like uh, a grandmom favorite recipe, mm -hmm. where, you, where you put in every single meal. Even if you're cooking recipe, like, I want to put it in, in it because it's mm -hmm. the favorite. So this is the, 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 the cherished piece in emotions. Mm -hmm. It's the piece that made, uh, that is part of the story of what made me or emotions what it is today. Mm -hmm. It's the cardigan. It's the piece that we've been able to sell many pieces from, from that piece, mm -hmm. you know, and to different audience. It's the piece that still speaks the same language of fluidity because it's unisex. Both men and women wear the same in three colors now. Mm -hmm. So it's a piece that speaks to me personally, that also speaks to me to the root of motions where I wanted to attain what I have today by using that piece. The fluidity, the attention to detail is a piece, the only piece we started uh, outsourcing the organic fabric, the fiber from the, sh the, 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 the farm to the weaving to the making. The yarn that makes the cardigan is sourced on, on, on my choice. Like I don't, I don't buy the fabric in the market. Went to the factory, make it, feel, twist, and say now I can do it in any color that I want. And then also the evolving of it to see how we interpret, we, we adapt the same shape and of silhouette, the drapery now that is a signature silhouette construction um, for the Imanuwa, uh, for the Imanuwa and the Imanuwa also said the drape back and, and front on the cardigan. I was excited to see also how to bring the interpretation, the color, uh, the, 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 the color pattern of the Rwandan culture that is evolved, the hand embroidery, all the details. So this is just our beloved piece among others. And it was important that we kind of celebrate a separation, a, 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 a separate kind of evolving of, of the piece, though the rest of the items are also coming up. Mm -hmm. You attend some fashion shows and you go to different events and you also see other fashion designers, what are they doing? Who is this kid that you see? I don't know if I could call it a kid or maybe this fashion designer that you said, like, I'm so proud of your journey, you know, that when you look back, they're like, okay, this one is doing great. You know, like, do you have any person that you really do love what he's doing now, one of your, the fashion designers mm -hmm. that are growing up? And that are growing up. Uh, I say, then if we're looking at this, we look at the continent. I have some favorite, uh, like Laduma, I've uh, been one of the people that inspired me as well. And uh, even when he came here and was like, you know, so she, he really, really inspired me. Could see that his brand, the, he has the knowledge on what he's doing and the mission and, the, and everything, you know, so it's, he's really, really great. That's what I, you know, I can say. And then also in, and today, maybe after me, there is also some talents I see every day. I'm shocked by different talents that are also coming up that I feel like they're really, really great, but also uh, lack the te real technicality of like making, the knowledge, the skills. So, but the talent, the talents are there. Amazing. You can see that. So what do you think about the fashion industry, the growth of the fashion industry in, in Rwanda in general? What do you think about that? Are we getting somewhere? We are. We are. I say that it's promising, starting from uh, uh, those who came before me and me and the next generation that is coming. You can see that there is a lot of 
hope there is also a lot of like uh, interest, even in daring. People are now daring, fashion designers or you, young talents are daring to put out their ideas, whatever they want, they, whatever they, not only in fashion, but in art. So I'm getting really impressed by how it's going to be, but we have also to be careful, careful about like what we are daring and how to do that before we collapse by tapping the, our talents or uh, uplifting our talents with the skills. With the culture always be, our, our heritage, will, will it always be in motion or do you ever think always. of like transitioning? Always. Our design is, uh, is, is a key, the key component of our design is the interpretation of our heritage aesthetics. So for good, for good is our signature you're gonna still see. Because for me the culture is not only what you see though, it's not only the design, also in the fashion, the construction, the blank construction before we paint yeah so then the paintings the construction reflects like that the painting reflects like that no, one point, way or another at this point, I think I've done everything. so what's next what's next is yeah. to keep uh, painting you know it to keep more painting change the painting and uh, evolve change the sanitary in the building and all mm -hmm. but uh, yeah you can't just Lay, lay, lay back and relax. So there are many other projects are coming, also in ways of distribution, which I will say we now starting uh, next from next month to do the international pop-ups. Mm -hmm. So this comes as a way of distributing. So we're going to have a big pop-up, first one here in Kigali, where we represent now full the uh, ready to wear in motions with different initiatives, also educational aspects about fashion and design, give back the journey to, to bringing the fashion to, to, to life and everything. So there will be many things as a pop-up, not just where you go and pick a garment, but where you go pick a garment and learn and know why you're picking actually that garment. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be, it's a new challenge because it's going to go also worldwide in Europe, in Asia, in the US. So this is what is coming up to for motions until we launch the new collection again in uh, hopefully July. I think you're also going to Nigeria. And Nigeria, Lagos Fashion Week next, uh, in next two weeks. So I want to know, if you like, have all this success and everything that you have achieved, I want to you to give a small advice to every kid, like we always end our interview like this, like to people who want to follow your, your, your journey, like people want to be designers, people want to one day create this, like, because most people, even though we kind of disagree on like, oh, you don't have to look up this one very much, but also at the same time, what advice would you tell them, people that want to be like you, people that want to create fashion brands? I say, Go ahead, like step out and make your ideas to life, bring your ideas to life. And in bringing your ideas to life, you have to evaluate every single step you need to bring the ideas to life so that they can be the best ideas in the end. This is a challenging advice, so which means really to go deep, see if you are ready to bring your ideas to life in a great way, not only for Rwanda, not only for East Africa, but for the entire world, because now the world is, is in, in your phone. The world is not, it's, it's just a point, it's just the information. So uh, now you can do something, you are in Rwanda, next day someone calls you from New York, like plan on the plane, I want to buy the art or come and do it. You know, it's now more really viral going. So we need to be careful and be ready to really embark on that kind of journey if you don't just want to stay around here. So that's it from our show today. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching the whole show. And as always, it's me, Christian Zawamba, bringing to you the best of the best in the fashion world. So it's only on KC2, Wednesday at 7 p.m., Saturday 6.30, and Monday 1 p.m. So see you right next time. Bye-bye.